Hi, it's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing and PR, the editor of Punchline Magazine. Welcome to Punchline Talks. Today, I'm joined by Mark Blake from Blake, Mark Blake's Hair Salon. Oh, hey, hair, is it? Mark Blake Hair. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Hair. <laughs> Good night. Goodness gracious, I got there in the end. Fantastic to see you again. The last time we met was in a curry house in, in Cheltenham. Cheltenham. No, I no, it was in Sirencester, wasn't it in Sirencester? I was delivering you know, magazines. It, it was a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, fantastic to see you. Thanks ever so much for joining us today. Can you tell us about the business as it stands at the moment? I know you've had lockdown. We'll yeah. get to that. But how big is the company? How many people work for you? How many salons have you got? Well, we've got uh, three salons, uh, 50 staff, and um, you know, now, it, in a sense, we're about to open again on April the 12th. So uh, it's 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 been a sort of a, a roller coaster year, I'd say, really. And um, you know, we've been open for uh, four years now. Uh, although I've been around, obviously, a lot longer than that our new company, as it, it is, at uh, Mark Blake Limited. So yeah, it's 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 a great sort of time for us to um, put our brand out there now, really, in in a, in a new sort of way, really. Because you you're going to open the Cheltenham store. Yeah, Cheltenham. Well, opened just before uh, the last lockdown and it was open for about six weeks and then closed again so I mean we, we have got the most amazing site in Cheltenham I mean all our salons have cocktail bars in anyway and um, you know the, the whole thing is we're taking it to another level you know it, okay we're hairdressing salons but we're it's all about the experience and I, I always say that um, you know a lot of people say they do customer service well yeah, McDonald's do customer service. We don't do customer service. We do customer delight. Customer delight is way, way above customer service because everybody does customer service. And in fact, if I get a problem with a company now, I phone up and I'll actually say, um, can I speak to your uh, customer delight department? And they say, oh, no, I've got a customer service department. I said, well, I think that's where you're going wrong because, you know, it's all about exceeding and, you know, the expectations. And, and the one thing we'll, we find is that we've made it that our clients can come in and have a drink even if they're not having the haircut. So we encourage them to use us as a pop-in place, as a destination. They want to meet friends. Uh, they can come and have a gin before they go out. The whole thing about it is, you know, we want to be perceived uh, and deliver that sort of um, ultimate customer uh, experience, really. And it, it is, it's a journey. And it's it's somewhere that people want to go. You know, we even say, if, you, if you're in town, you just want to use the loo, come in, our loos are really nice. I mean, they're beautiful. Um, and it, it's the whole bar sort of thing about it. You don't have to have an alcoholic drink, you can have a coffee, fresh mint tea, whatever really. So yeah, it's it's more than a haircut. So next time I'm, I'm delivering mags, I, I need to go get caught a bit short. So I could quickly pop in and uh, use the loo. That'd be yeah, I'll tell you what, you will love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it must have cost you a fortune then when you had to close the Cheltenham branch. You must have been heartbroken after just... Yeah, I mean, you know, everything. We, we've gone to the nth degree with Cheltenham and, you know, the antique mirror behind the bar, everything. It's all been specially made. Um, we've really gone to make sure it is a luxurious... Um, but an experience that people want to come into. They they feel comfortable in there. They don't feel as though they can't touch something or sit down. And that's the whole thing about it, with the tables and chairs outside. Um, yeah, it, it's beautiful. And the uh, same with all our salons. You know, we've the one thing I've realized is that um, my name, uh, now being above the door, I want to be proud of everything and every person who works for me. And so it's one of those things that we will have the ultimate team, the ultimate, ultimate destination. And yeah, we're not looking to go nationwide, but I want to be known for this quality brand that people aspire to. And other salons, it, it, you know, all say, oh, wow, we couldn't even attempt that. Well, you could, but you know, most people don't want to put the effort and the energy into it. And I'm relentless. You know, I I answer my first email probably at say six in the morning, if earlier, if I'm you know up earlier, because um, I'm obsessive about work. I'm I'm on duty seven days a week. And you know, people say about um, you know, oh, you t you should get the work life balance right. Well, yeah, you get the work life balance right when you've made it, not when you haven't made it. You know, so I haven't made it yet. Yeah, 
you know, I have a, a great lifestyle, but uh, I want to achieve something and I want my name to be, you know, going down in uh, the hairdressing world and, you know, everything, even from my logo behind me, you know, it's an M, but it's actually a thin hair, a thick hair and a hair follicle. So it, it's, a, it's possibly a bit silk cut for some people in the sense of, you know, that whole sort of thing. But I like things to mean something. And, you know, that's part of my brands that, you know, my staff will know what we stand for. I mean, I was, I've always admired your marketing, Mark. You've always been top drawer and that kind of thing. A bit like Dale Vince, he's brilliant, egotricity. Um, how do you keep a handle on, on everything then? You've got your, the three different salons, salons, you've got 50 staff. You talk about making sure everything is the best it possibly could. How do you, how do you make sure that happens as the MD? We're, we're relentless on training. And everything, even through this lockdown, we've been sort of having our staff doing educational things. They've been on learning new things. Um, we, we have, I'm involved in more WhatsApp groups with my staff, whether they're social media ones, their training ones, their everything about it. And anything image we put out has to go through several layers to be approved. And ultimately my wife and I, my wife's my business partner, um, who uh, we have to approve everything. But, um, you know, and my wife gets a bit mad that if I start sort of messaging the staff after sort of 10 at night, she's saying, I think it's, you know, it's a bit late now. And I'm like, well, why? You know, they're answering. Should I think they think they have to answer? That's the whole thing. But yeah, I want them to be on board, really. If they want to work for us, you know, they want, because part of it, I always say, if you, if you leave, um, you know, I'm happy to give you a, um, a reference, or I'm happy to give you a blank bit of paper with my signature on and write your own reference. And if they're looking for a job in the hairdressing world, I can probably get them, if they're going to Australia, there's salon owners there, I can say, right, I can get you through the door, uh, New York, whatever, really, uh, to get you a job uh, in a, a top class salon, really. And, you know, my staff now are earning sort of pretty good money. I mean, OK, we're, we're not talk Hairdressing is always seen as a bit sort of, um, I suppose, the lower end of the market. But, you know, I've got staff on now over £65,000 a year. So, you know, you don't imagine your hairdressers uh, could be on that sort of salary, really. So, you know, we're, we're actually attracting um, a lot more London salon uh, hairdressers now. And uh, because they're coming out to the Cotswolds thinking, Do you know what, you know, what I paid for a, a place in London, I can get, you know, which was a small apartment, I can get a nice house here now. Uh, and I can earn, I might be earning less, but I've actually got a better lifestyle. So do the hair salons, do the hairdressers, do they actually work for you then? Or are they sort of, is it freelance or they own the chair? Uh, no, uh, every, everybody works for us because the rent a chair thing, I think with the Deliveroo and the um, uh, Uber thing coming on, there's going to be a lot of uh, people are catching a code with the rent a chair things because uh, they're going to be hit for holiday pay and things like this um, and, and sort of possible VAT investigations and things. So I think that's a, a ticking time bomb. But um, I like it that I've got, I am a, a bit of a control freak and I like to manage that standards. And uh, I don't believe if they're renting a chair that you can actually manage those standards. So they are fully accountable. You know, th throughout the day, the receptionists have to open up a, an email in the morning and uh, they have to be my Although we've got CCTV in all the, um, the salons, they have to be my CCTV. So they're telling me the mood of the salon and what's happening, uh, the rebook rates, the um, what uh, everything about it, what they've sold, what they haven't sold. Um, so I like information, really. So it, it is everything's measurable and manageable, really. Then, Mark, do you think the customers change? Though a lot of the business people I talk to, um, you know, especially on the retail side or hospitality sale. The customer now is a lot harder work. And yeah. they, they want a lot more and, and they expect a lot more, especially if they're paying top dollar for it. But even, even if they're not, you know, have, have, have you found that, you know, the, the, the change, shall we say? Yeah, and that's where I, I, I like to over deliver. 
um, because they're coming in with a sense of, um, you know, well, what am I going to get? So uh, what I found is that really by the way we um, serve people or the, the way we greet people that we're over delivering and, and me as a hairdresser, I'm, um, I'm also a trichologist as well. So I've got a clinic in Harley Street and uh, another one in Liverpool. And I teach trichology all over. And um, th the one thing I found that, you know, I could feel anyone's head and the chances are tell them if they've got the Irish ancestry any Eastern ancestry or they, this. And the, I can tell people things about their hair they've never heard before. And I, the bizarre thing is I'm one of life's great hair sniffers as well. So I can smell infection. I can smell uh, when they wash their hair. So I can tell things about people. I'm like a bit of a Sherlock Holmes. So I'm scanning them. I'm looking for lateral thin in the eyebrows. I'm looking for excessive facial hair or anything like this. That's going to give me clues. So I can actually say to them something about their hair and they'll think, well, I've been going to the hairdressers for 30 years and nobody has ever told me that. You know, have you got uh, an, an itchy scalp in the summertime? Well, do you drink much white wine? Because white wine is a well-known agitator of the scalp. So, okay, I'm not asking you to give up white wine. Let's try rosé or red. Uh, and they're like, well, that, that's weird. So I, I can actually, you grow between 0.3 and 0.5 millimeters of hair a day which doesn't sound a lot, but you put that 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeters end on end, multiply it up by 100 to 150,000, because that's how many hairs you've got on your head. And that adds up that you will grow about 36 meters of hair a day if you put all those 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeters end on end. It's the second most prolific cell producer in the body after bone marrow. And we just take it for granted. So part of what I do and my staff do is telling you how to eat properly to get the best sort of quality hair, because part of conditioning hair can be conditioning it from the inside as well as growing, uh, conditioning it from the outside. So it's a, it's a bit different. And so, yeah, you have to work harder. But if you're enthusiastic and we all know enthusiasm sells, and I'm probably the most enthusiastic person you'll ever meet about hair or hair loss. You know, hair loss is not an enthusiastic thing, but I'm involved in more hair transplants than probably any other trichologist or person in the UK uh, delivering uh, patients. So, and I even go into the operating theatre with them. And we've been, um, hair transplant patients have been having uh, procedures all the way through lockdown because surgeons operate in full PPE. So yeah, it's one of the areas I've kept really busy through lockdown. So it's a bit like a bit like a dog in his shiny coat. Then, really, if you feed them the right stuff, then uh, then they have nice shiny hair. Yeah, and we, yeah, we just take it for granted. So that that's something you know that uh, it, it's got to be. We, we we've got to be different, you know, and you've got to have a unique selling point these days. And you know, you cannot just open your door and expect people to come in. If you do, then unfortunately, it's not going to happen for you. So you've got to understand why should people come in see you. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit like the market's changed, you know, years ago, 20, 30 years ago, there'd be shopkeepers. Nowadays, yeah. they have to be retailers. They have to be, you know, all these other hats that they have to wear. And talking about hats, that moves us really nicely onto the triology stuff that you've started with. You know, when I first met you, actually, you came to my office in the fire station. I always remember this. You walked in and, uh, and you, you actually pulled my hair and you said, yeah. oh, you'll never be bald. Yeah, you've got a great head of hair. You know? I mean, I need a haircut, but, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny because you, I must admit, before I switched on the Zoom call, I was thinking, well, oh, I wonder if I should put a bit of gel on here, a bit of, bit of product on here. But anyway, um, the triology stuff. So you, you obviously knew a lot about hair. You've been doing it for so long. It's a big part of your business now. You say you're in Hardy Street, but you're, you're recognised throughout the world, aren't you? Yeah. Now, so I've been doing... more, how did that start? Did you just... I, it was one of those things where I was always interested in fine hair and other hairdressers were sending me people to cut their hair because um, they knew I knew a bit about it, but I actually wasn't qualified at the time. So I, um, I went off to the Institute of Trichologists to be trained and that was probably seven years ago now. And so since that really, I've developed my name into uh, one of the world's leading trichologists now. And so I've been doing a lot of things while in lockdown um, through the World Trichologist society uh, in New York and uh, broadcast into trichologists all around the world really and I'm just about to do a global summit 
Um, so yeah, the, the trichology for me is a, a big thing. And, you know, I, I retail my own uh, trichology tablet. Uh, they're on Amazon. They're sort of, uh, we, we sell those, lots of salons sell these. So it's all about getting the, the, the best out of your hair, really, because, you know, that's what I'm involved in. And, you know, okay, I've got sort of quite long hair, which yes, as I said, needs a haircut. But that part of my image is, you know, if I can't have hair, well, what can I do for you? So, uh, and having hair is all about choices and there's nothing better in life than having choices. So if you've got hair, you've got a choice whether you shave it off. If you've got no hair, you've got no choice. So part of my and my team's uh, uh, sort of whole sort of thing is to give you choices with your hair. And we want you to have as many choices as you can, really. And that's with trichology. You know, we, we're going to give you those choices. If we can't, then, you know, we have to be honest and tell you. Um, and, you know, I, I in Harley Street, I charge £480 an hour and I look after loads of celebs, pop stars and, you know, I'm constant at wags. Um, it's one of those things where I have, um, you know, I'm not allowed to say uh, people because I, I have to uh, sign non-disclosure agreements. But, you know, I've had patients in Dubai over the lockdown in St. Barks. They've been there since March. Uh, no, since November, and um, they've only just come back from some bars because they just were keeping out of the way. But these people, well, they're very high profile and they want to sort of look after the hair. They meet, need to look their best. So, you know, they might phone me up and say, um, I'm in a restaurant. Uh, what shall I order? What's good for my hair? And I say, well, you read me the menu. And then I say, well, I'd go for this and that. And, um, and where are you? It sounds really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I do. No, not being funny, a bit like uh, I was going to say, down solicitors or anything, but you do have a little folder and go, okay, they phone me 15 minutes, I'm going to charge an extra 200 quid for that consultation on the, on the menu. Or is that, I, is that, oh, don't worry about it. I, I charge uh, 5,000 pounds for a six months uh, consultancy for uh, celebs, and that's 24 hours a day. So they can phone me 24 hours a day because, you know, hey, I just sleep with the phone besides the bed. So uh, it's, it's not an issue to me if they're on a different time um and so yeah it could it's important to them and i have a network of people all around the world that i can then refer them on to if something needs happening uh they need some treatment in dubai or whatever i've got people in puerto rico or you name it uh i can call in a favor what's the most uh, uh, unusual hair that you've been asked to do what's the most unusual cut or oh <laughs> I, I was asked uh, by a celeb actually to do something very unusual, a uh, female celeb for Valentine's Day, uh, shall we say beneath the waist. And so, <laughs> but I, I said, no, I stop at the neck. <laughs> and, and it was a pink heart shape. Uh, but, and the rest I'll leave to the imagination there. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what to say about that really. Um, I mean, you've been in the business so long now that uh, you, you, I was going to say you've probably seen everything really, but. Um, the, the celebrity side of things, I would imagine it's a lot about confidence as well. I mean, I'm just guessing, but and of course, it's huge amount of money. They've got to look good, don't they? You know, yeah. Tom Cruise. I don't know how old Tom Cruise is. I think he's fifty odd, isn't he? But you never think he just looks immaculate most of the time. Yeah, and it, it's it is one of those things. They have to look good. They. You know, I remember years ago advising um, an, on a George Michael concert um, when because he used to go on stage and um, had very curly hair and because he, he sweated a lot. And so he'd go on with his hair blow dried and then um, he'd start sweating in the concert and the second part of the concert always wear a baseball cap because it went really curly like. Kevin Keegan type of thing um, and so at the time his sister said to me um, what can we do so we came up with this thing it, it was before straightening products were around with perm lotion in flour to straighten his hair and it was one of those um, it was for the concert where he was in South America and he said ladies and gentlemen Mr Elton John and Elton John came on and you know don't let the sun go down and uh, it, things like that when you're a sort of part of things like that you know and I can only say that now because obviously he's not around but some of the celebs I see uh, I mean they're just huge and you know I've had to be the O2 um, at the back in case there's a sort of trichological problem and uh, sometimes you know you get to half time and you think well you know they're not going to stop 
got the concert now. Well, I'm in this sort of now lovely box or whatever. I think I'll have a glass of champagne or something there. But the wags are also are very, you know, they're worried about their extensions falling out. And so, yeah, there's lots of issues there. But, you know, hey, they they have to look good. They're always worried how they look from this angle, that angle. Will their extensions fall in if they're going down a, um, a red carpet or anything like that? And, and would you just get, you know, someone phones you up, would you jet across to Australia and, or, or to Los Angeles and sort them out? So yeah, it's, it's, you know, we, we, I charge and, um, you know, sometimes I can do these things by Zoom. I, I specialise in reading their blood tests. That's uh, the one thing. So, you know, we've got the hairdressing side, the trichology side. Uh, the hair transplant side uh, so you know my, mine's all the hair transplant I wouldn't have any hair on top uh, so you know it, it we, we've got it all covered really as well as having this lovely sort of uh, environment really and and uh, what's been lovely is that all the hairdressers throughout the UK and the world now come to me for advice and Gloucester is my sort of head office really so it's great although Harley Street is lovely and, and the receptionists in Harley Street say you've got such a different way with you because you know everybody else comes down the stairs in Harley Street like somebody has run their cat over and yet they all come down the stairs Mark and they're like bye Mark see you later you know because we I have a different approach to it and so, um, we, we've got to keep this up beat thing and I and I realized with celebs celebs only like the word yes so you know you have to say yes and then you have to work around that word yes because <clears throat> the moment you say no they don't phone <laughs> I, think, I hate to say this I think a lot of businesses like that actually you know yeah. most people say can you do this for me can you do that for me you go yes yes and you go out the door and think oh God, how am I going to do that you know yeah. <clears throat> that's how you work it out I think everybody who's in business does that I had a a, a very famous uh, female pop star that you would know and so uh, she wanted something and I had to call a favor in from um a surgeon in um my uh, just outside Miami in Boca Raton and uh you know I'd already said yes to her and so I had to get this in and it was like oh my god I had to get it all shipped over FedExed over and within probably I think 48 hours I had this on their doorstep and uh, they were like wow I, I, I didn't believe you could get this for me and so they don't know what went on in the background. Yeah but that's a lot of things with clients they don't want to know that detail do they they just want you to deliver just very quickly because we're running out of time um you, you invested an awful lot of money in that Gloucester store on Westgate Street. Yeah. And, you know, the high street is changing. Do you, do you still feel that, you know, people will come to the high street? Is that all about the destination? You, you obviously invested there in Cheltenham, you invested in Siren Sister. Um, you've got the Harley Street place, but that's different. Do you think there's the, the high street itself will bounce back? Yeah. <clears throat> you can't get a haircut on Amazon. You can get anything else, but you can't get a haircut on Amazon. And, um, you know, guys can OK do a clipper job, but females, uh, there, there's, a yeah, there's, there's a difference with males and females. To a man, a good haircut is what's on the floor. Men have a haircut. They look on the floor and say, good haircut. To a woman, a good haircut is what's left on the head. So they will always be, because they're not worried how much is on the floor. They're just worried what's on the head. And so for a woman, especially, it's all about getting what they want. And they know they cannot order it off Amazon, really. So it has to be a personal thing. So I think hairdressers will flourish on the high street, but they've just got to have a unique selling point. OK, again, um, what's going to be the big fashion hairstyle this year? Well, I, I think everyone's going to be playing a lot of catch up. So uh, there's a lot of hair to come off. Um, so I think that's the one thing. Uh, instantly, women will want to go sort of blonder for the summer. That's the usual thing. Um, we, we've got a lot of longer hair at the moment. I think that's um, not been a good thing for our industry because you don't need sort of longer hair cut as often. So I think that's the one thing that uh, people are going to come in with severe roots. And so there's a chance to change things really for them so it, it, it's a blank canvas at the moment really but there is no particular look at the moment um, because nothing's been happening nobody's been going anywhere i was going to say i read in, the, I read in one of the national newspapers actually that it is there's an opportunity to start again if you've yes. had this big you know it really is you've grown all this hair now you could have whatever kind of hairstyle 
Yeah, you, you've well, got things. And as I said, you know, it's choices and it, there's, it, it's great to have choices. Okay, we're running out of time, Mark. Your top three business tips, please. Um, I would say, oh, I wrote down one earlier. Uh, and when I said earlier, that, you know, you've got to get your work-life balance right, but you only get your work-life balance right when you've made it. And a lot of people are trying to get their work-life balance right when they haven't made it. Um, and I always say that your average um, successful person, millionaire or whatever, works 60 plus hours a week. Your average person works less than 40 hours a week. How would they ever reach those goals? So, you know, that, that's another thing. So it is getting everything. You've got to work hard to get where you want to get and uh, enjoy life or enjoy work and you'll never work a day in your life. If you don't, if you're not in the right job, it's always going to be a bit of a, a chore. So you've got to make sure you enjoy it. So choose wisely when you do a career. I never go to work and that's great. It doesn't matter whether it's a Sunday or whatever. I love it. And so I know I chose the right career. So, yeah. Mark, really great to see you again. Really enjoyed our chat as always. Thanks so much for joining Punchline Talks. Thanks Bye. so much, Mark. Bye-bye.